Hello everyone, hope you are loading well. So in this video, we'll discuss the third problem of lead code weekly contest 358. Uh, a medium level problem, but I would say the problem statement is misleading. Uh, that's why the accuracy is low. I'll let you know that. Okay. So the problem name is minimum absolute difference between elements with constraint. Okay. So it says that you are given a zero indexed integer array nums and an integer x. Okay. Find the minimum absolute difference between two elements in the array that are at least x indices apart, right? Remember, it says two elements. This is the misleading part, okay? In other words, find two indices i and j such that the absolute difference between the two indices is greater than or equals to x and absolute difference between nums of i and nums of j is minimized, okay? Return an integer denoting the minimum absolute difference between two elements that are at least x indices apart, okay? So this is what it says. In short, we are given an array like this one. Okay. And what we have to do, we have to find the minimum absolute difference of any two elements, right? But again, there is a constraint. The constraint is the two elements that you choose should be at least x indices apart. Okay. For example, in this case, x is equals to two. Okay. So four, three, two, and four. This is index zero, one, two, and three. Right. Now, if you want to find the difference of this element, okay. So you are bound to choose the elements which are at least a at a distance of, uh, you know, the minimum distance between that element is two, right? Between, between this and that element is at least two. So for example, you cannot choose this element, right? If you want to find the difference, if you choose one element is this, you cannot choose this difference. However, you can choose this and this, okay? So what's the minimum absolute difference? Obviously four minus two is two and four minus four is zero. So basically zero is an answer, right? Uh, let's take this case. It's 5, 3, 2, 10, 15. Okay. X is equals to 1. So that means if you choose this element, right, you can choose this as well. Or, or I can say here you are free to choose any two elements, right? X is equals to 1 means suppose you are choosing this as J and this as I. So basically J minus I should be greater than equals to 1. Okay. So here if you choose, so you can see that, yes, if I choose 2 and 3, and in that case, I get my answer and that is equals to one. That's the minimum answer. Similarly, if you talk about this one, so one, two, three, four. Now the only pair that you can select here is the difference. The difference of indices is three. So zero, one, two, three. The only pair that you can select here is this one and this one and hence the answer is three. This is what the problem is asking us to do. The problem statement is simple. Okay. Uh, it's just that one of the cases because of one of the cases, it's failing for most of the users, right? Uh, so let's see, let's see how to approach it. Okay. Let's see how to approach it. Look, this is your array. This is my array, right? Suppose I'm standing here. This is the ith index. Okay. This is the ith index. Now, what are the elements that are valid? Okay. So all the elements, all the elements where i minus i minus x is greater than equals to zero. Getting it. I mean to say the difference between them, right? The difference between them is x. So choose any index x which has a difference i minus x, at least i minus x, right? That means you cannot choose these elements, right? You cannot choose these elements. So what I mean to say, when you're standing at ith index, somehow try to, uh, you know, try to find the difference, minimum difference of this element with all the elements that are valid. Which are the elements? What are the valid elements? Again, that are at least at a distance of i minus x. Oh, sorry, x. So all the elements which have index less than i minus x. Simple. Okay. So this is what we do. Now comes the question, how to find the difference with all of them, right? So just see here, if I keep this data in some order, right? In some order. For example, this is these are the valid elements for me. And I want to find the minimum difference of any of these elements with this element. So what I can do? Suppose I keep these elements in sorted order. Uh, let's take a set, right? You can you can use any data structure. Set is easy to use. That's why I've done. That's why I've used it. Now suppose this element is, uh, let's assume this element is five, right? And I have kept my elements, valid elements in sorted order. So now what I need to do, I need to find that what is the position of five when you insert it in this sorted array, right? In this sorted set. So what I'll do, I'll just find what is the what is the maximum element less than five right or 
in short if i insert 5 here what's the element that will come just before 5 in the sorted order and what's the element that will come just after 5 in the sorted order right because these are the only two candidates right to give me the minimum difference okay of this guy the newly inserted member okay with any of the previously inserted guys right that's the only thing so suppose the element is 5 so if i insert it what's the element just on my left and just on my right so i find the difference between these two i find the difference between these two and obviously i keep on updating my answer right now comes the question how do i find this right the element on the left and then element on the right so again you have inbuilt functions right based on data structure you have inbuilt functions so what we can do like in case of set if this is the element so there is a function lower okay what lower does lower tells you right you can just google it also lower tells you what's the uh, largest element that that is less than five what is the largest element that is left less than five now here just see one thing i have to consider all the elements which are less than and also equals to five what i mean to say suppose in my set i already have five and the new element that i'm inserting is also five so answer should be zero what i mean to say if there is a occurrence of five before uh, this insertion so I'll, i have to consider that also so you can use a trick that okay instead of searching for five search for six i mean to say use this function by passing six why because now lower returns the largest value that is less than the provided value now since i want to include five as well if that is there in the set i'll just uh, do it that okay nums of i plus one search for this return me the lower value for this one all right i'll get that value if that exists if that value exists because there is a chance now that i am inserting the smallest value so there is no lower bound so in that case obviously i'll have to check the validity second case what's the higher value so there is a function higher as well okay what this higher does it will return the smallest value greater than five smallest value greater than five now again i have to consider five as well if that is present so what i'll do instead of searching for five i'll search for four right i'll search for four this is the number line right this is the number line this is five this is four this is six a function is returning me values less than five but i have to consider five as well so what i'll do for lower i'll say okay return me all the values less than equals to six contrary to this if a function is returning me values greater than the provided value and i want to include five as well right so i'll, I'll just pass four right simple that's the trick here so this is what we'll do this is what we'll do now i was i was talking about the tricky case right so here if you see here if you see na, um, so if x is equals to zero just see the constraint x can also be equals to zero so they are picking up the same element that is the tricky case because of which most of the solutions are failing right i mean to say if you write a code such that that okay if x equals to zero so forget about all this logic just sort the elements and find the minimum difference between adjacent elements right but that will not work here that will not work here because they are considering the same elements as well right so yeah that's it let's see the code uh, so this is the tree set that i have taken answer is the maximum value uh, this is the number of elements i have now just see i am at the ith element right which element should i insert ideally this this is sort of a sliding window okay this sort of a sliding window i encounter a new element so suppose i inserted the element still here now when i move to the next position i'll insert the next element i move to the next position i insert the next element and so on so that's why if i minus x is greater than equals to zero that means if it's a valid index add that into your set simple now find the lower key so set dot lower nums dot get of i plus one again because of the same logic right i want to find the largest value less than five the function returns me less than five but i also i want less than equals to five so i'll pass six right so nums plus one now if low is not equals to null that means yes there is a value so it's a uh, math dot min of answer nums dot get of i minus low similarly you find the higher bound set dot higher nums dot get of i minus one why again five six four right so search for four don't search for five otherwise if there is a five it will return six but if you search for four and if there is a five it will return five so that's why nums dot minus one and again update your answer and finally return your answer right 
so this is how we need to solve this problem whenever you see uh, you know uh, a problem where you have to check for validity of indices right um, just see that can you apply a sliding window technique or not so whenever you have to take care of the frequency use a hash map whenever you have to just see whether a particular element is present or not you can use a hash set right so that's what we have done here we have used a tree set because tree set keeps the elements in sorted order right otherwise you can use a hash set if you do not uh, if you are not bothered about the order of the elements right but here we are bothered right because we are using lower and higher functions right uh, so yeah that's it for this solution i hope you learn something new from this video do support it by giving up a thumbs up do subscribe to the channel as well uh, in case you have any issues related to the solution mention that in the comment section i'll leave it on each one of them thank you take care bye bye